Hello and welcome to another episode of Pokemath. My name is Stefan Eriksson and here in episode number 71, we are revisiting an old friend of mine, namely Shuffling. And to do this, I'm not alone. I have my good old friend here, Nicholas Danielson, with me. Hello, Nicholas, and welcome. Hello, and thank you for having me. Anytime, my good friend. I've known Nicholas for pff, past more than 10 years through card games. We played Pokemon for many years, and now he's gone a little astray and played One Piece, but that's fine. It's also a pretty good game. He tried to convince me to play it. It's not mm -hmm. a bad game. I give him that. Mm -hmm. But that's not what we're here to talk about, right? What are we here to no. talk about, Nicholas? We are t here to talk about what we call sufficient randomization, in other words, shuffling, and what constitutes proper shuffling in different card games. That is indeed correct. And you may have seen me discuss that with different people on the internet in the past and whatnot. I've also made a few videos for Pokemon, and it's been very nice, and I also teach that at a university course. So I thought, you know what? I, I love to talk about this topic. I can talk about it for hours, but we're going to try to get straight to the point. So... Mm -hmm. Let's start off with, for those who don't know, what is, say, sufficient randomization and at the same time, insufficient randomization? Would you like to give that a go, Nicholas? What is meant by that? What is meant by that is uh, if we have sufficient randomization, we will reach what we call a uniform distribution within our deck. Uh, yeah. And uh, the mathematical precise number, I remember you had this anecdote about more <laughs> particles in the universe and stuff like that. That is very true. Uh, um, That's very true. I'm not here to test you. Don't worry about it. No, and, no, no, no. But, no. but from, a, from a late term, you're absolutely spot on. And the whole point is, this is not supposed to be super difficult. It's not some kind of abstract concept that nobody understands. We're just trying to say, okay, if you have a deck of cards, no matter the size, so it counts for all card games that we know it should be approaching what we know as a uniform distribution. And what is a uniform distribution, you may think? Well, the probability of drawing any card from wherever in the stack of the same should be the same. No matter where your card is, it should be the same probability. They shouldn't be saying, ah, it's more likely to be on top and not on the bottom. No, it should have the same probability of being wherever in your deck. The moment you achieve this, it's sufficiently random. Why is that so important, Nicholas? Why is it so important that we have stuff that's sufficiently random? Because otherwise we reach predictability within our deck. And um, if we reach predictability within our deck, we know when we will draw stuff and that's going to influence a game where it's intended to be random. You're uh -huh. not supposed to know where everything is all at once. But somebody will call estimate. that consistency. Somebody will call yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. You're spot on. And so we want to achieve sufficient randomization. And that should, you know, one piece better than I do. We both know mm -hmm. Pokemon fairly well, I would say. Mm -hmm. And I will go on a limb and say, that should also count for Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, Lorcana, and all the other ones. It should be the same. Mm -hmm. There should be no games where it should be predictable where a certain card is, right? That seems, no. seems fair, right? Seems fair to us. Now... Then the thing is, we have a lot of ways of shuffling. And by shuffling, we mean, of course, a way of randomizing our decks. And there's many different shuffles out there. And we can all quickly agree on, like, mass shuffle is fine. People love their riffles. Just don't bend my cards. But the idea is, if you riffle and mash a few times, you know, all good. I talked about this infamous number seven, eight, whatnot. We have other videos. For those who are interested, Pokemath episode number five covers this. Or just dive down in my interview with uh, Azul as well. I should put a link in the description for all the things we're going to discuss here. But the thing is, there's many shuffles. And Mash is fine. Riffle is fine. We get on shaky, ter shaky territory when we talk about different kinds of block shuffles. Or overhand shuffles, they were called. Or Hindu shuffle, or Koti uh, shuffle. They have a lot of names. Mm -hmm. If you combine them with Mash and Riffle, you'll get there. So that that's fine. But hold on. I forgot one, didn't I? Yes. You forgot my absolute favorite in the entire world. It's the one we call the pile shuffle. Ah. And it's such an amazing tool because it allows me to separate and declump my cards so that I know that I won't draw the same cards all the time. Oh, that's oh. random, right? Oh, that's magic. That that sounds like pure <laughs> wizardry. How how did yeah. so so how did you come there? Could you give me a demonstration how this works? Yes, oh absolutely. Would love so, to see um, this matching in action. You have to see this matching in action. 
Oh, okay. Wonderful. So, That's a nice sure, playmat. Have, yeah, it's a one piece playmat. Pretty apt for the theme, right? Yeah, Anyways, seems good. so I have my deck of cards right here, and I'm just going to perform a completely classical pile shuffle. We all know this. We've seen yeah. people do this at tournaments, yeah. and we love to do it. You're right? moving your cards not around nicely. Yeah, they, they spread yeah. out, they move around a lot. Yes, they do, and I can't see them, right? Nope. Okay, do you have any guess on what's going to happen next? Well, you're going to present a thing, and I'm going to want to cut it. So just cut it somewhere in the middle, that's fine. A lot of people will cut it, so cut it once, okay. that's fine. I'm going to cut it once, yeah. just seems like this. Is yeah. this fine? Yeah, seems fine, seems okay yeah. to me. Now I can't possibly know what's going to happen next, right? Mm. Yeah, oh. or they're different. Okay. Oh my god, three different, all different cards. different. Oh yeah, that sounds good, sounds good. But wait Hold a minute. On. Yeah. Now, now, what is this sorcery? <laughs> Absolute sorcery! Oh my God! How does this happen? I have no damn idea. Could you please mm -hmm. elaborate what just happened here in front of my eyes? Okay, so uh, what just happened here was I separated my cards into four different piles, and by doing this, I reached a deterministic order of my cards, and. Um, also, I reached a pattern, and this pattern, despite n how many times my opponent tries to cut my deck, it will always be the same. Hmm. Um, so that's and that's the issue with pile shuffling. Now, that is very cool and all, and of course, people may have noticed a slight sarcastic undertone in the way I said things here. So I apologize if I was mocking anyone, but we're trying to prove the point here that first of all, this is not a true shuffle at all. Second of all, uh, we should not call it pile shuffle, and some games have already gotten so far to use the term pile counting, which seems more, uh, well, correct in the sense that it's an excellent tool for making sure you have all the cards you need in your deck, right? Like, you make sure when you pile in these stacks for whatever game needs, say, 40 cards, 50 or 60 cards, you can easily count your deck. Yep. Very good tool. But as you just demonstrated, then, um, well, it comes up in a deterministic order right like there it's it's predictable what's going to happen and many games have different terms for this like some will call it you know uh, mana weaving i think is the term for magic i have not a magic player i would like to say but i've heard the term being picked up once in a while yeah. and and other games may have different terms for this but the point is mm -hmm. people they say wait i want to distribute my cards i'm sure i get a land or an energy card or what else low cost care whatever they want to have in their opening hand mm. and then like oh but the pile shuffle make sure of that yeah but hold oh, come on hold on stop right there that means you're actually you know you're ordering your deck and if you know kind of the order already something's fishy going on wouldn't you say <laughs> yeah i mean the thing is um people they get superstitious with their cards and nobody thinks it's fun playing a card game and you keep drawing the same cards over and over when you're trying to find other cards to kind of you Correct. know solve a, a problem you're presented with in in whatever match of of card game you're playing um and that's understandable and all but that's not the premise of card card games card games are supposed to be random and you're building your deck around this randomness that can occur you take all kinds of statistical issues into consideration and you build your deck around it um but sounds about right sounds about right it sounds about right but no but no people reach levels of cheating with uh with their pile shuffling sometimes per perhaps it's not intentional but it can be very much be intentional and it's recognized so by a variety of different card games uh recently in Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, they just banned pile shuffling from their premier events yep um which should be telling for those people who still stand by doing the pile shuffle it can be used to cheat and yeah. um and this completely ruins the integrity of of any card game you're you're uh, you're, you're or any absolutely competitive right. sport absolutely uh, right absolutely absolutely and even even in matching in magic the gathering it it has been been an issue for years and in the rules document uh, documentation uh, for judges uh, there's a section where it. I'm going to just read it verbatim. Yeah. Uh, pile shuffling alone is not sufficiently random and may not be performed other than once 
each at the beginning of a game to count the cards in the deck. Uh, and they elaborate by saying pile shuffling is completely non-random since individual cards can be tracked and since cards are shuffled into a deterministic order uh, a single pile shuffle can help players count their decks and loosen sticky cards because we've all tried it before you know a 10 round tournament uh, your sleeves get super greasy for whatever reason you have sweaty palms or yeah all kinds of factors. Um, so ob obviously, we we want to combat you know small groups of cards being put together, but we can do we can solve that with 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 the mash shuffle or the riffle shuffle, depending on the card game and the price of your cards and how willing you you are to treat your your cards less than nicely. <laughs> yeah, but you you hit a lot of things here, and uh, just yeah. for everybody uh, just for everybody out there, we're gonna link all these things below, so you can also check the the source material. The statement mm -hmm. from Yu-Gi-Oh, the statement from Magic, and Pokemon also got a uh, nice video material also where they also state that it's not a true shuffle. Not so harsh as Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh yet, but it's definitely a step in the right direction, which I believe mm -hmm. is good. And I also do agree that if I'm setting up for a game, like a best of three game or a best of one or whatever, before my match mm -hmm. starts, it's an excellent tool to count your deck. And that's fine. Perfectly fine. Hence also why the term pile counting should be used rather than a pile shuffle. Because mm -hmm. shuffle is misleading because it's not a shuffle as we've just been discussing and a lot of games have seen. Mm -hmm. And it's also to say like a lot of people out there, they do it because, well, some they just don't know. And that's fair. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, ignorance is bliss sometimes. And it's um, it's also, we also dare just to inform and you also learn. And I'm not going to say I'm all holy about this or not because back when I started playing, I was also pile shuffling because I didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. I learned, I adapted. But now when you see it at events, you get you raise your eyebrow in suspicion because you're like, hmm, mm. at, at best, they're just wasting time because it's also a slow way of shuffling. If it wasn't mm -hmm. shuffle, it's still considerably slow, even though you do see some people go really fast, but it's still considerably slow. Mm. Uh, and at worst, they're just cheating right in front of your eyes. They're, they're, whether they're doing it you know, intentionally or not, it's still cheating. Mm. And that's bad. So yeah. I hope... I hope that just your showcase here, little argument here, and us scattering some information out there can 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 at least show some people and convince well, just some people that you know ultimately we want nobody pile shuffling besides counting their deck pile counting mm -hmm. right, but I hope that we can also get somewhere and say okay guys, really, just at least try and listen, yeah, and and read it's not that uh, it's not that hard. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you look at the math behind why you have to shuffle to re reach the uniform distribution yep. of your deck. Um, and I also think it's a important topic to keep touching upon uh, once in a while, especially as new trading card games emerge. Yeah. Recently, we've had Dragon Ball Fusion World. Last yeah. year, we had Lorcana. Star and, Wars Unlimited, I think it's also Yeah, Star anyway. Wars Unlimited uh, yeah. as well. A bunch of different card games. Um, and that brings in new people uh, and new people that may not have pl played other trading card games before. So it's important to show them and explain to them why, why what they're doing is not correct. If, I may, and, if, if that's the right word. Yeah, but, but that, that's fine. I, I I know what you mean, and I hope everybody yeah. also gets the gist that you know we're not so, we're not trying to you know bash 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 people because no. let let's be fair. The majority of people who pile shuffle is just because, like you also mentioned, people are superstitious about their cards and their shuffling yeah. techniques, and uh, they've just been doing it for forever. And mm -hmm. some people just don't know. Yeah. But we're here to inform, and we're also saying you know if you really want to count your cards, do it at the beginning of the game. The match, I should specify, the match. Yeah. Beginning of the match, that's fine, all good. But then please go ahead with a shuffle that actually randomizes your deck sufficiently. Yeah. That should be the short message, I believe. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> I remember one of the most uh, famous instances of uh, a player, a Pokemon player, that tried to pile shuffle mid-match. Uh, don't know if it was after game one or two, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and uh, the, the the stream judge it just sits there, and looks at it, and shakes his head and <laughs> stops the player. And you can obviously see that he's telling him, no, 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 don't do this. Uh, yeah. 
one, you're wasting time, and two, it's not a shuffle. I, um, I sincerely, I somehow hope that this uh, stream judge, I know who you are, not going to mention you, but yeah. please, <laughs> please, if you find yourself watching this video, give a shout out. This would be, uh, we know we know what happened. And uh, we hope that these uh, situations will not arise in the future. And sure, people are there to learn. You will see pile shuffle now and then. And then you just tell people nicely, hey, it's not a really good idea. Don't need to give them a lecture every time. But of course, if you have any questions out there, feel free to reach out and just ask. Like we're here to help the community. We're here to tell you, hey, this may be not a good idea. And how can we actually do it right? I have a lot of material here. I'm sure Nicholas is available for also questions if there's anything popping up. He loves to be uh, keyboard uh, attacking on Twitter, I've seen, or X, or whatever <laughs> whatever platform you may be I'm on. I'm very passionate about these subjects. <laughs> I know, and people can be passionate about many things. And I'm yeah. also pretty sure if this video reaches anybody out there, they're so probably also going to attack us in the comments here for being, you know, uh, dum-dums that says like, oh my God, we're attacking their precious pile shuffle, <clears throat> pile counting. But come on. I've been teaching this course now for three years, making, po uh, making videos about this, and... Uh, the math checks out, guys. You're not randomizing your deck. Let's just face. Let's face the music. It's not randomizing. Yep. I think. Um, I think that should be enough yapping for today, don't you think, Nicholas? So, does any other word you want to give here at the here at the end? Uh, no. Um, uh, I want to thank you for reaching out to me uh, to Anytime. help spread some awareness. Um, because uh, recently there's been a lot of discourse on social media about this subject, and uh, I think it would it was a good idea to to remind people and yeah uh, refresh their memory. <laughs> and I think that's fine. And everybody's welcome. Everybody's welcome. We're trying to be an inclusive game. Everybody, we want everybody to partake, and we want to have fun at the end of the day, right? And yeah. we don't want to, you know, knowingly or unknowingly cheat or whatnot. So we're just trying to raise awareness and say, hey guys, if you're pile pile shuffling, you know, don't. <laughs> don't but i think uh, that should be all for today so i just want to extend a thanks nicholas also for want to be here on the, this little uh, episode of pokey math and mm -hmm. uh, talk more about our favorite su subject uh, pile shuffling counting <laughs> uh, randomization call it what you want and with that said i would like to thank everybody for watching or listening or watching and listening or whatever you want to say and uh, this was what we had for this class in stefan's classroom and i hope to see you back for another class in Stefan's classroom. Until next time, bye.